In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at classes and objects in Java. This is a first tutorial or a first introduction to this based on my course notes. And um, so let's go ahead and get dive into it right away. Hopefully you're taking a look at the notes at the same time. So this tutorial is going to be a summary, but I'll try to make this tutorial coherent enough to follow without. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a class. Now a class is a blueprint. So uh, in Java or any other object-oriented language, when you create a class, you're not actually creating anything other than the idea of what you want to have um, to use later on. In this case, I'm creating a class called Fraction. And a fraction is made up of, an in, uh, of a numerator and a denominator. And both of those are going to be defined as integers. So I've created a new class called Fraction. For those of you who've been working with Java before, you will recognize that this is similar to any program we've created. We've always created a program with, with, which starts with a class and the class name. The class name should begin with a capital for a naming convention. And then we've got the brace brackets. But in this case, you can see I don't have any main method. I don't have a public static void main to start. This is it. This is my, my fraction class is complete. Uh, with this basic definition of a fraction says that a fraction has a numerator and a fraction has a denominator. And I'm just going to go ahead, file, save that as, and I've already started one here, but I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite what I had before. So I've created this class called fraction. Now I'm also going to need another file. So this file, fraction.java, is going to contain all the information about what I think a fraction should be. And this is going to expand as we progress through these tutorials. So let's go ahead and create another file. And uh, this is going to be class, and I'm going to call this fraction test. So this is going to be my, uh, this is going to be the class or the program that I use for testing uh, fractions. So I'm even going to put this at the top. So this is the program which is going to test the fraction class. So in this case, I'm actually going to need something that can execute. So public static void main. So I put in my standard header for a um, for a main method. And now what we do in between here is where things uh, get a little bit more interesting. We have to delve a little bit deeper into the idea of what is a class versus an object. So the first thing is, I'm going to just flip back to here, which is, and again, I'm going to just, as I, as I talk about it, so a, uh, a class uh, is a blueprint, let's call it, or it's a uh, design about what a fraction should look like. and how it will behave. The behavior of the uh, fraction class is something we're going to look into as we progress. So this is a blueprint. That means there is no fraction as yet. So what I want to do with this other one, again, I'm going to save a copy of this, save as, and this is fraction test. And I'm going to overwrite my, my previous copy. And so this is fraction test. And what is this going to do? This is going to allow me to create an object from the fraction class blueprint. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to create an object using that blueprint. So as of right now, uh, I don't have any fractions to work with. Now, the class name, again, going back here, fraction, that is the exact same as um, we've seen this in terms of primitive data types. So an int or a char or a boolean or a double. Um, we've also looked, we actually, you probably have some experience with one class type already where you've created variables of a class type. And that would be, and I'll just put this at the top just to illustrate that, that would be a string. So if I create a variable that is of the uh, type string, you might have noticed as you were programming in Java that the string data type has a capital in front. And that is a clear indicator in Java that this is actually a class. It's not a primitive data type. 
this is actually a more complex data type and if you've worked with strings at all you probably now you think back on it you think yeah that actually is a lot more complex because the string data type has all sorts of stuff associated with it it has a length you can compare strings to each other you can look at things like substrings there's a lot more going on there so the same idea is going to happen now which is we are going to develop our own classes which are going to be more complex and in order to use them in our program we have to create an instance of them which is essentially we have to create an object an object is an instance of a class so in this case I'm going to say fraction and I'm going to call my first fraction F now in the same way so let me you know what before I well I'm gonna go ahead and do this system dot out dot print line name so if I go ahead and compile this it's saying the local variable name may not have been initialized so it's basically complaining because name has not been set to anything if I set it to a very a value and compile it now now it's complaining about the fact that we don't do anything with F but that's okay if I run this it prints out the name Bob which is the name that I that I input here so in the same way so if we go back to what I had before at this point we have a variable called name which is able to have a string associated with it but unless I associate an actual value with it there's nothing here sort of the same idea so I'm gonna drop this whole comparison to strings now and we're just gonna focus on this new fraction class so as of right now I have um, I've created the variable F and the variable F is designed to have a value of a fraction associated with it but right now it doesn't have anything associated with it the first thing we actually need to do is we have to ask for some locations or for some space in memory to store this data because that's one of the things about classes is especially when you get into creating classes on your own you don't know how big they're going to be right now I my my fraction class the design says you need room for two integer values but I could add many many more things on here if I wanted to and we will as we go on and so the first thing we need to do is we have to ask Java to provide us with some locate for some space in memory and the way we do that is we use the new command with fraction so basically we're saying so here I've created an object or created a variable let's call it create a variable to uh, to hold a to hold fraction data from the fraction class blueprint and then we need to request space in memory for the object so this is a two kind of a two line process now that I've done this I actually have room for uh, my new fraction and I can actually do things with it now the way that I use an object is I use this dot notation which is the variable name which is F and then when I put a dot after that anything that appears after this dot is a reference to something that exists within the object now in our case our object only has two pieces to it it has two what are known as data fields num and den so I'm going to say f num equals 5 f den equals 7 so I'm basically saying this is the numerator is 5 the denominator is 7 so essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to initialize fraction to be 5 over 7 that's what I've done here I've set the numerator to 5 and the denominator to 7 and now I can actually make use of this so I'm going to show you three things system dot out dot print line of f dot num system dot out dot print line f dot den and just to illustrate something interesting here print line of f so I'm going to output all three of those let's go ahead and compile this and run it and 
I have, you can see down here in my output pane, I've got the value 5, I have the value 7, and then I have this kind of odd value, fraction at 1E244B5. What that is telling me is that I have a fraction class object, and this is the memory location. This is actually the location in system memory where this object resides. So keep that in mind. If you do a, a print line on the object itself without using any of its data fields, Java is going to respond by telling you where that object is. Because in Java's mind, this is the address of the object. This is, the, this is where you would find all of the data associated with that object. And it, you could do the same thing if you did a system.out.print line of, it wouldn't work if you did it with a string, but if you did it with an array. If you did it with an array, you get the same thing. You would get the location of the array in memory. Okay, so we've done these things. We've actually output some values. And so let's, uh, let's do a little bit more. Let's introduce a second object. So we're going to have fraction G. So we're also going to say that G is equal to a new fraction. And let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy some of this code and use it to set up G. So there's G and G and I'm going to output G the same way because again we I want to compare the results and let's set G equal to and now I'm going to actually reference my notes just to be consistent with that I should have done that before so I'm going to set F equal to three quarters I'm going to set G equal to five over six and now if I go ahead and compile this and run it you can take a look at the output pane I've got three and four